Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. James Hicks here from Hicks New Media Infotainment News. I'd like to welcome everyone to another exciting session of ITN Live. Uh, today, I am talking to uh, a good man. I'm talking to a good man. I got John Kowaleski on. He's a uh, certified nutrition specialist uh, focusing in holistic nutrition and wellness coaching. Uh, John founded T2 Nutrition and Wellness. You know, he's, he's focused on creating lasting change in people from, from all walks of life, right? And a variety of disoriented uh, eating scenarios. He, he, he talks about the, the right way to gain strength, the right way to lose body fat. And I just want to have, you know, kind of the conversation with him about a few things. Starting a journey uh, during a pandemic from, a, from an entrepreneur perspective, uh, being someone in the health, fitness, and wellness uh, industry and, and what that means. I know he's had some things that, that, that have kind of touched him close in life recently. So, so again, I want to talk a little bit about some of that and just uh, get his perspective on making sure we all take care of ourselves, mind, body, spirit, so all, all of that. And, uh, you know, and then talk about how he's moving forward with this past, um, what is it, 15 months or so that we've been in a shutdown, lockdown scenario, and from an entrepreneur's perspective, getting the message out, right, being able to talk to folks using digital technology, using content creation and things like that. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Kowaleski. Sean, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, brother. How you doing? All right. Did, did I did I bring you on the right way? I mean, you know, I want to yeah. make sure that yeah, I yeah, summed I, up. Hey, man, I'll tell you what. I've been I've been on a number of shows, especially yeah. since the pandemic, and uh, I, I don't think I've had a better introduction, brother. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Well, you sure, know, really they, they, they called me. I don't know if you ever saw the uh, the kings of comedy like Steve Harvey bringing yes, everybody on. I, I, I want to make sure that I bring you on with the fanfare. You got you hyped up. You start off with the music, right? Just just to make oh, sure. Yeah. I brought you on screen. I don't know if you know I brought you on screen while the while the No, intro. I was jamming, brother. I, I, I was jamming. I was. I was digging it. I was digging it. I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> now I'm I'm in Northern California. I'm going through a little bit of weather, but I, I cannot even dare compare what, what I'm going through to what where you are and what you so to tell the folks about you and where, and where you are right now. Give give us the okay. elevator pitch of John Kobaleski. The elevator pitch of John Kobaleski. Wow. You know, I don't think they have elevator shafts that are that long, to be honest with you. Um, I am I am in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia. Um, it is actually quite nice out. Once I get done with all my in-studio work today, I think I'm going to take the mountain bike out and just go for a ride, to be honest with you. Um, I am a man who, through going through his own struggles, developed an obsession. Mm. and And my obsession is to wipe out obesity and type two diabetes wow. seems like a pretty big lofty goal and it is but i know for a fact that these conditions can be reversed yeah. it just takes a matter of dealing with people's mindsets and educating them on the proper ways to take care of themselves so that's that's me it's like going through my own journey and you know um coming from 405 pounds and almost dying from a diabetic coma to, to being the healthy individual that I am today, that, that bred something inside me and all of the struggles that I went through in that process. I don't want other people to have to struggle like that as well. So I went through a spell where I had to sit around for a while. I had to have a knee replaced and my wheels got to spinning and T2 nutrition and wellness was born. So, hold on. so let's talk about that because, because you, you, you threw out a lot there, right? And, and, and a lot for us to consume. So, so, so talk about the fact that you started out and you got to that position, right? You, you got to that 400 yeah. plus pound position. What, what was mm -hmm. that? What, was that just, um, you know, waking up every day and seeing the Lay's potato chips and the Dunkin' Donuts or, you know, what was that lethargy? Was, you know, what, was it well, something generic, uh, genetic? I'm sorry. First, first and foremost, it was stupidity. Okay. James, I will be honest with you. And, and I'll tell you why. Um, my family history is absolutely riddled with heart disease, diabetes, mm -hmm. cancer, mm -hmm. the like. Okay. Um, I was like so many people out there that had the mindset of, I'm going to live till I die. I'm just going to enjoy my life. I'm not going to worry about, oh, well, I need to stay away from that food or, oh, I don't need to partake in that particular thing or whatever. Yeah. 
people just want to live their lives and they don't consider the consequences. They don't consider what can happen years down the road. So when, when everything happened for me, when my aha moment happened, the universe, God, whatever, slapped me upside the head with a brick. Um, because at that point in time, I was, you know, I was like your normal everyday guy. I got up in the morning and went to work. I worked 50, 60, 70 hours a week as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I had a social life. I spent time with my kids, went out and played in the yard with them and everything else because I wasn't really restricted and wasn't having a lot of symptoms. I didn't think anything that I was doing was wrong. Wow. Okay. So then fast forward to one day I'm at work and I'm underneath a, I'm underneath a car doing an alignment. And an hour later, my boss comes back to find out where I'm at and I'm unconscious. I'd slipped into a diabetic coma. Wow. My blood sugar when they got me to the hospital was about 513, which could have killed me. Wow. Should have killed yeah, me. Yeah, that that that's a that's a bad number. Wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything over 300 and your organs can start shutting down. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, all this stuff happens and and I wake up after after several hours of being in a coma and the doctor looks at me and he's like, look, dude, you got to change what you're doing because you keep going the way you're going. You're going to be dead in a year. Mm -hmm. And here I am, James, laying in this in this hospital room and my wife's there and my kids are there and, and everybody's crying and all upset. And I was like, OK, all right, I get it. You ain't got to tell me twice. Playtime's over. It's time yeah. for me to go to work. Yeah. You know, and and then everything progressed from there. So so talk about that, though. I mean, because it, it's almost like and, and I, I don't want to draw too many similarities, but I would say it's similar to quitting smoking. I've, I've never smoked, but I'm saying, you know, it, it, it's hard to make that turn, make that pivot after you, you've been in a certain mode for yes. a, a long period of your life though. So what were the things that, how did, how did you, again, when you got out of the hospital, when you, when you started, when you went back home, what, what did you mm -hmm. do? Did you throw everything that was in the refrigerator out? Did you start looking at more green and red food as opposed to, processed food meats and high fructose corn syrup which is the the devil of everyone so yeah pretty much well it, it was it was a combination of things okay first of all i had to take a real hard long look at myself there we go and and that night um when when i came to in the hospital that night they wanted to keep me in the hospital for like a week they wanted to do like um they wanted to do um scopes and make sure all my arteries were right and all this other stuff just because I had type two diabetes. Okay. Okay. Now, granted type two diabetes, what makes it so dangerous, James, is that you can have it for years and never even know it. Mm. Okay. You, there are no, there are, there are no visible symptoms until it gets to the point where it's starting to get out of control. Okay. So having a mother that was, that was diabetic. Mm. Okay. I knew that, okay this is happening. I know I need to make some changes because I had seen as I was growing up when my mom was diagnosed, um, you know, she was diagnosed as a type two diabetic. She just didn't take care of herself. And eventually from her pancreas working overtime to try to control the sugar and the meds that they were using, eventually her pancreas just stopped making insulin. She wound up becoming a type one diabetic and okay. then everything progressed from there and yeah. we eventually lost her from complications mm -hmm. of diabetes. So, but knowing that I knew that I had to make certain changes. So I took that long, hard look at myself and I was like, I'm a pig dude. Every day, James, every day at work, my lunch was a large pizza, two big Macs and a large vanilla milkshake. That's what I ate every day for lunch. Dude, I was stupid, stupid, Wow! but I did it. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and I had nobody to blame but myself. So immediately I was like, okay, well, the gluttony has got to stop. You know, I need, I need to start, I need to start learning what it is that I need to do with food and exercise and things like that to correct this problem. Because, you know, whether the doctors wanted to tell me that or not, I knew I wasn't too far gone. I knew it. I knew deep inside that I had the ability to change this. So, you know, I dove, I dove in head first. I mean, I went to see two different doctors right after I got out of the hospital and the, neither one of the, neither one of the doctors really gave me enough information 
It wasn't, they didn't give me the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. Gotcha. They gave me meds and they told me, yeah, yeah, you got to change some shit or you're going to die. You know what I'm saying? That's what they told me. Uh, newsflash, I already knew that. I need, I need, so, more, I need more information, right? Yeah, I don't need the cliff yeah, notes. Yeah, just, just, I, just keep, yeah, just keep <laughs> dumping that on me because I'm so thick headed that it's not going to sink in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So the, the, the moment, the 60 minutes that changed my life, was when I went to see my endocrinologist and he actually had a dietitian on staff. Okay. And I spent an hour talking to this young lady about what carbohydrates do in the body, what fats do in the body, what proteins do in the body. Okay. Now, granted, I, I'm going to tell you flat out the way that the doctors and a lot of the medical professionals out there, even some dietitians, the way they're handling type two diabetes right now today is 100% wrong. Mm. When people get diagnosed as a type two diabetic, most of the time they tell you, you need to eat five to six meals a day. Make sure you include three servings of fresh fruits, which fresh fruits are loaded with sugar. Then if you're eating every two to three hours and you're, you're not getting adequate amounts of protein and fat in those meals. What winds up happening is your insulin is constantly spiking and coming gotcha. down, gotcha. spiking and coming down. Now, in most cases, what brings on type two diabetes, because there is a genetic predisposition for it, but what brings it on in 95% of people. And that's a, that's an American diabetes association statistic is too much body fat, especially in the midsection, in the torso area. Okay. So you have this vicious cycle where your, your cells become resistant to the insulin. It's the insulin's job to put away all the sugar that comes in the bloodstream. Either put it over here to use for energy because you're exercising or doing whatever, or sending it to the liver so it can be turned into fat and stored for later use. Well, your cells start resisting the insulin so they don't take in the glucose. So then your level of glucose in the bloodstream continues to build. When that happens, it's getting massively flooded to the liver. Gotcha. Your liver's okay. cranking out protein left and right. And it's like, it's like a brick layer, James. Your liver is like, okay, let's put this fat here and this fat here and this fat here and this fat here because we're going to need it. Because you, we as human beings do not have the ability to just eliminate glucose. We, we, we can't do it. We either have to burn it. That's the only way we can do it. Interesting. If we okay. eat too much, yeah. If we eat too much protein, if we eat too much fat, we're going to spend a little more time in the bathroom on the next day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because our body, our bodies will eliminate that naturally. We cannot do that with carbohydrates. Our body is physically impossible. You know, it, it just can't happen. See, see, the see, only way. The, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. I, I was going to say, no. You know, these are the things, these are the behind the scenes. And, and I, I really wanted to have the conversation of dispelling in misinformation about nutrition, about dieting. I don't like to use the word diet. I, mm -hmm. I, I like to say no, nutrition diet sucks. instead. So, but, you know, these are the kinds of things. And folks that are watching, listening, like like my man Dre right here, he, he loves the beard right here. So, uh, <laughs> he loves the beard. I can hook you up, Dre. I can hook you up. Dre, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about, about uh, John's beard game, too. It's definitely on point, and you, you'll appreciate it. Oh, uh FYI, I know Dre. He oh, and I, he and I have done a podcast before. Oh and, uh, my gosh. I used to do, a, you know, I used to do a podcast for the Dad Bod Transformation Group on Facebook, and he was one of my guests. I know Dre well. Dre go back. Uh, okay, yeah. so so you definitely family. Yeah. We definitely all family. Yeah. So um, yes. What was I going to say? Uh, God, now now you throw me off 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 track here. Oh, d dispelling information about diet, about nutrition, mm -hmm. about uh, th those kinds of things, and, and we typically don't hear these 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 uh, uh, recommendations. So, folks that are watching and listening, I really wanted you to make sure that you do your own research, right? So, yes. don't just take us Absolutely. for face value. But I can um, I can definitely guarantee you what you hear in John speak is the truth, and make sure that after you do your research, that it corresponds to your own body, your own body type and things of that nature, but definitely listen to what the man is saying. So I'm sorry, man, go, go ahead and keep going. With no, your you're fine. You're fine. And I want to touch on something that you just, two things that you actually just said in the, in that little, in that little thing there. First and foremost, folks, what I want you to do with the word diet is imagine that that is like a 12 year old bratty kid 
that is from the neighborhood and he done run up in your house and you want to get rid of him. Grab his little behind by the back belt loops and put your foot in his backside and kick it out the door. See that that okay. that's East Coast talking right there. Cause you know I'm yeah. from Virginia too. Yeah. You from West Virginia. That that's East yes. Coast talking. Grab oh, yeah. him from the yeah. yeah, it's straight up, straight up. Just snatch that little sucker up. I don't care if you give him a wedgie while you do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And just boot his behind out the door. The first three letters in the word diet. Uh oh. D I E. There you go. D I E. Yeah. Okay. Here's the problem with a diet. A diet is like putting a Band-Aid on cancer. Wow. If all you do is follow a diet, as soon as you stop following that diet, what happens? You go right back to your old ways. You have to address everything that is encompassed in what it is that you're doing with your health. And what I mean by that is this. Like when I take on a client... Yeah, do I ask them, you know, do I give them a sheet and tell them what, what food, ask to, I'll get it out here in a minute, for in them minute. to tell me what foods they like, what foods they don't like. Do I get like a three or four day diet record from them so I can see how they're eating? Yeah, I get all that stuff because I want to know that, that, that tells me where the mechanics of it are off. Gotcha. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's the behind the scenes stuff. I'm talking to them. I ask them questions like, how much does your family and the people around you support what you're doing with your health? Oh, that's because huge, here's brother. the thing that is huge because if you don't have the support at home, I don't care what you try to do. If you don't have, if you don't have the people at home that say, Hey dad, you know, I, I know that, that you're struggling with your weight and you're trying to fix yourself because you want to be healthier. So don't bother picking up those potato chips at the at the grocery store let's find healthy snacks stuff like that that's support that your family can give you when you're going through something like that but if your family's like well okay you're on a diet that doesn't mean i am right you know what i'm saying it, it's it's things like that that are a breakdown in the support mechanism that cause people to fail mm. and the other thing is people Always one of the one of the first things I do is ask people, you know, why why do you want to work with me? Why do you need my help? Well, I need to lose weight. No, you don't. Wrong answer. Huh? You don't. Yeah, wrong answer. You don't need to lose weight. You know, I like to tell people all the time. Tony Robbins was talking to this guy in a seminar one time, and he and he was talking. The guy stood up and he asked him a question, and he's like, "Well, you know, what is your?" And Tony was like, "Well, what is one of your biggest struggles?" I struggle to lose weight. Tony said, well, I'll get, I'll pay you, I'll pay you a million dollars. If you come back here by the end of this seminar is one of his five day things. You know, if you come back to me by the end of this seminar, I'll pay you a million dollars if you've lost 50 pounds. And this was like day two. So he had like three days, right? So on the fifth day, he asked him, he said, okay, I, I, I've got a million dollar check right here in my hand. Have you lost 50 pounds? Well, Tony, it's impossible. There's nothing I could do that would lose 50 pounds. Um, that's not true. Cut your leg off. Cut your leg off. You'll lose 50 pounds. <laughs> Cut your leg off. Take my million dollar check. Go to the hospital. Get your leg sewed back on. You know, James, so often people say, I've tried everything and I can't lose weight. I've tried everything and I can't get rid of this midsection. I've tried everything and I can't regulate my blood sugar. You haven't tried everything because if you tried everything, you wouldn't be having these problems. It's just that simple, man. That's, that's, it that's making it plain down. right there. Like my pastor would yeah. say, make it plain. I love that. I that's love it. that. That's it. That's it. It all comes down to understanding the unknown. You know, anybody can be, you, you know, you can take anybody and teach them to be the most effective speaker in the world. Yeah. All you have to do is give them the ability to take the unknown and explain it so it's known. To bring it into the light so everybody can see it. That's what I do. That's what I try to do with everybody that I come in contact with. So that brings in the whole concept of the title, I'm going to say, of holistic nutrition, right? Because because you're, you're you're not even talking about bringing up charts and graphs and, and, and things of that nature. You're you're you're, mm -mm. you're starting with the mind. You're starting yes. with the support system at home, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. starting with the the why. Right. And then, right. then we'll get into the how and then we'll, we'll go start lifting some heavy weights and we'll start running around sure. the block, all that stuff. Right. But, but you're working on the individual and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you're working on that individual person first and understanding 
what's the reason that you're at this point that you're calling me and asking me for my help and how to get not don't don't tell me about the um the, the symptom let's get to the real problem kind of kind of thing sure. right okay exactly yep you're exactly right because think about it if you join Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers yeah everybody that's in Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers follows the same point program and they're mm. allowed to eat the same crap it's like as long as you're meeting your points you can eat what you want as long as you're buying the foods that we're telling you that you should eat, you can, you're good. Okay. And you look statistically at people that have lost significant amounts of weight on Weight Watchers, on Jenny Craig, even worse yet. And this one is a big shocker. The biggest loser. Yeah. 85% of the people that lose significant amounts of weights through any one of those processes gain it back within a year and a half. That's crazy talk. And it's because you are not, you're not treating the disease. You're treating the symptoms. You're not getting down to the root of the problem. It's just so, that simple. So, so talk to me a little bit about what, um, and that, that's amazing stuff right there. And folks, if you're, if you're listening, watching, definitely feel free to ask a question because John, uh, John's dropping some gems here and you can get this free consulting for the, for the next 35 minutes or so, <laughs> or so before <laughs> he starts charging, charging fees. Talk to us a little bit about what T2 does, uh, again, in terms of, um, again, onboarding uh, clients and mm -hmm. and then kind of I'm going to pivot into that and ask how you're doing it now with, again, the advent of, of COVID and, and then lockdown and some of the restrictions that, that, that we have. How are you able to service your, your clientele nowadays? Okay, sure. Well, to for starters, um, I never really – trained a lot of people in person to begin with hmm. because my, my, my goal is too big, James. Wow. I, if, if I spend, if I spend eight hours in a gym or 10 hours in a gym and I work with, you know, if I work for 30 minutes or an hour with each client that I see, how many people am I going to be able to help in that 10 hours? Okay. I can come in here in this studio and I can put this microphone in front of my face and turn this camera and the light on. Yeah. And I can make a video. I can do a live. I can speak to a Facebook group that has 63,000 plus guys that are all trying to lose weight and be healthy for their families. Yeah. Brother, I can't do that in the gym. So realizing that early on, I realized that, okay, this isn't, you know, this isn't what's going to work for me in a gym. So I need to get into this. I need to learn how to do video production. I need to learn how to make YouTube videos. I mm -hmm. need how to do all this stuff. And, and, and I'm just like, I was like what I wish so many people would actually start to do. And that's, I don't care what you've got. Just start. James, you can go to my YouTube channel right now and you can look at some of the first videos that I put up there. Mm-hmm. And some of those videos were shot with me connecting my phone camera to my crappy laptop. And I was sitting in the basement of my house yeah. with ceramic floors, all kinds of echo and five dogs running around. This one right here? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look, I'm, I'm I think prepared. That, I think there's Let's still some so. of my... I'm yeah. well prepared. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's still some of my earlier videos in there. Okay. Um. And like, like that one, the one video down there at the bottom that was shot with my phone at, um, like keep, keep scrolling down that one right there with that workout video in the miscellaneous section or uh, the yeah. move, the, the move video. If you open that up and you look at the video quality that, that I was bringing at you. Oh yeah. There's you're, my you're basement. Definitely, uh, what is that? Can you see my dogs? Can you see my dogs in the background? Can you see them laying there on the couch? Little pugs. Yeah. But the beard game is still on point though. I, I like oh, the yeah, beard game yeah, is still on point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But that's, but that's my point. You know, it's like, if you've got a message, if, if you've got something that you feel the world needs to hear, I don't care if you got to just pick up your phone, pick yeah. it up, go live, record a video, post it on your Facebook page, tell all your friends to share it. Hey, if this little five minute video that I just shared with you, if that touches you, or if you think it can touch somebody else, please share it. So that's crazy, because right? That's because that's why I'm putting it out there. 
So you found a way to scale your business, ir- so almost irregardless of the pandemic, right? You, you found the right way to go out and reach the majority of, mm-hmm. I'm going to say society, because you're international. You, you are, right? Yeah. You, you're you're, yeah. you're trading oh, yeah. folks all over the globe just by yeah. recording 30, 40, 50-minute videos or whatever, talking about nutrition, talking mm-hmm. about uh, rate training techniques, supplementation, things of that nature, as opposed to, again, being open for six hours of a day and having a, having four clients, right? Yeah, yep. exactly. That's the way to yep. do it, man. And, and and I love the fact that you, I'm a technologist by, by nature, by, by trade and by, by employment, but just the fact that you were able to embrace technology and take advantage of uh, what whatever you had in front of you. Yeah, folks, again, he just had, had his phone with him, his whatever, shot at four, 480p, who cares, right? It's irregardless of the production, the content is what mattered. So the content is going to resonate with folks. Talk to us a little bit about um, the journey of turning your passion and your desire to get healthier into a business, right? Into to an entrepreneur from the perspective of not just the uh, weight training, supplementation, and, and, and health mm-hmm. side, but now, Dre, we're going to get into the beard game, too. So, so I, I want to talk a little bit about <laughs> you know, what sparked the whole entrepreneur aspect of you as well, and where, and where did that come from? Well, um, that actually came about because in um, late 2018, the early part of first of 2019, I, um, I started having a lot of issues with my knees. Now, back in the 80s, I was in an accident on a construction site where um, I had something basically smash into the back of my leg and it wound up ripping a bunch of ligaments and stuff. Wow. So I, I had some artificial ligaments and stuff put in that leg. And back then... You know, like now they could do that stuff outpatient surgery in your home. But but back in the 80s, I was in a like I was in a cast from my toes to my hip and okay. I was in a wheelchair for a year. Wow. Um, so it was kind of crazy. But anyway, so fast forward, I get older and I've, all, I've always worked real physical jobs, um, was a mechanic. And then, you know, I was a, a service technician for a pool company and all that type of stuff. Um, but then I was working in a factory and I was spending anywhere between 12 to 16 hours a day on my feet nonstop running on a concrete floor and it just did my knees in um i wound up i tore the meniscus in my left knee okay and had surgery to replace that while i was rehabbing that the added stress on my right knee that had been injured from years ago i had no idea that arthritis had developed in there to the point where it was literally just shredding my cartilage oh so while i was rehabbing my right knee went bone on bone Dude. So when that happened, I couldn't spend any more than an hour at a time on my feet without that thing swelling up like this. Okay. So here I am. Um, you know, I had like my FMLA insurance and whatnot that I was living on best I could, you mm-hmm. know, and then, but I knew that, you know, at 50 years old, 51 back then, um, it's like, I knew that this is a sign. This is, this is the, this is the universe, God, whatever, telling me, Hey, John, your days of going out here and physically working hard are limited. So if you want to continue to work hard, you got to learn to work smarter, not harder. So what I did was I, um, while I was just sitting around, I I just kind of dove into podcasts and audio books and all these different things. Now, mind you all the while, going through my journey built that passion in me that I wanted to help others. And I was helping people not to the scale that I am today, but I was helping people even before I started my business. Mm. But when I realized that I was going to have to do something different in order to, you know, still be a, a providing member of my family and, you know, still be able to put food on the table, I knew that I had to do something more. And I was listening to a podcast. Um, it was a, it was a, on YouTube. It was um, one of Tom Bilyeu's shows. And he was talking to, I believe it was Mark Sisson. And he had asked Mark why at 60 plus years old, he started Primal Kitchen. Mm-hmm. And Mark was like, there was a need, Tom. There was a need. <laughs> it's just that simple. That's simple. He's like, if you, if you find the world's biggest problem, guess what? you found the world's biggest business opportunity because people need help. And that struck a chord in me. So I picked up my phone and I'm like, Google, how many people in the world today have type two diabetes? 
280 million people. Mm. 70 million of them are undiagnosed. 13 million of them are kids. Oh, I was like, that's it. That's it. I have always wanted to help people. I've always wanted to help people get healthier, but I need to focus in. I need to focus in and make people understand that things like type two diabetes and it's cause it's biggest causation, which is obesity. You know what I'm saying? Obesity is the number one cause of type two diabetes. I knew that I had to address those issues. So I immediately went to my laptop and I'm like, go to go daddy. It's like T2 nutrition. Boom. That domain's available. Bought that domain, started Dang. building a website. Now, you, we were talking that you were talking about the fact that I'm a holistic nutritionist. And there's a reason that I say that because as I went through that journey, I actually wound up rebranding and calling it T2 nutrition and wellness, because as I started to delve in and help people and started being on podcasts and other things, I started to realize that wellness is what it's all about. And wellness is all encompassing James. It's mind, it's body, it's spirit, it's everything. Yeah. And that's what I want to do because I know that for somebody to fix their disordered eating habits, it has to start here. It starts here. It moves here. Once you can take it from their mind to their heart, it, it, it becomes a lifestyle change yeah. and a yeah. lifestyle change is sustainable. Yeah. That's the hard, you know, that's the hard. Like they, Everything else is easy, right? Once, once you get, mm -hmm. get over yes. that hurdle. That I, so mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So you know, fast forward to me building a studio and starting the jacked up podcast and, you know, and, and everything else, everything that I have done since everything that I've done since I started recovering from this first knee surgery yeah, was to build this dream of helping people. I want, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like Gary Vaynerchuk. In, in in the way that I want millions of people to come to my funeral. I want millions of people to come to a memorial service, let's say, because yeah. I don't I don't subscribe to the whole spend all the money on the pine box and that type of stuff. That's yeah. just me. But I want people to memorialize me because it when I die, if I haven't wiped out obesity and type two diabetes, James, I want to take a big old chunk right out of its ass. I want it you, to know you've, that you've it's been in the fight. Yeah, I've done my job. If nothing else, you can make sure that I'm going to be the loudest one standing on a soapbox. So maybe somebody else will hear me and take, and take over when I'm gone. I love that. I love. So you, you, you kind of mentioned, and, and I want to eventually go to ketocrine nutrition, the site, because I think that, that's the brand, mm -hmm. but T2 nutrition yeah. is, is the, is the umbrella. T2 nutrition. Yeah. T2 nutrition is the coaching. Okay. Believe it or not, uh, and, and a lot of people find this funny, the actual LLC that I formed that both Ketocrine and T2 Nutrition are under is, is called OMBM Enterprises. OMBM stands for Old Man Beast Mode. And the reason that I named Dude, I need my some LLC that, 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 come on, come yeah, on. Hey, look, I've got t-shirts. I got t-shirts. That's a, that, that's a whole entrepreneur discussion yeah, that we can right. have. But anyway, um, no. I, I did that because my oldest son, who to this day is still has problems with his weight and whatnot, and he has epilepsy and other issues. But, um, you know, he's like, he actually, he would go to the gym with me on occasions. And um, he was done with whatever he was doing in the gym. And normally he would just go sit in the lobby area, but he, ha he actually just kind of followed me around and watched my workout. And he's like, dude. He said, you're not just, you know, you know how a lot of people say beast mode activated when they walk into yeah, the gym. Yeah. He's like, you're old man beast mode because you're in here working harder and showing more dedication than guys that are in this gym half your age. So that always stuck with me. And then when I decided to form the, the LLC, it was OMBM Enterprises and then everything went from there. It's just like Lance is saying here in the comments, man. Look, we, we need <laughs> links to that merchandise because we will mm -hmm. definitely be, be be rocking the old man beast. Yeah, mode. I'll have to send. I'll have to send you some <laughs> links. I've I've started some sample stuff on on Teespring just to kind of okay. get the ball rolling. I've got a couple designs there, but I'll definitely make sure you get the links so so we can share it for sure. Okay, okay. There's like two different and, um, designs on there um, right now. 
if if let me so I don't want to talk um, about Teespring, but they're a great organization. But I am getting ready to. So I, I'm kind of dropping some news myself here. I'm, I'm thinking about Go becoming right into. Let me hear it, brother. Um, affiliation partnership with a, a company called Press and So. So okay. Press and So does a lot of uh, content creator uh, branded mm-hmm. merchandise as well. And I reached out to them actually yesterday to see uh, what the specifics are of getting uh, Hicks New Media branded merchandise. So if mm. I, I know I'm going to like it because I've seen the quality uh, of, of what mm-hmm. they produce. Okay. And if it, if it works out for me, I'm, I'm going to shoot you uh, the link Do that. to, to, Do to that. maybe Do that. Um, places. Places like Teespring and other things like that are good to just like test ideas. Yeah. But that's really yeah. about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. you you can't, you can't build, you, you know, I can't build a t-shirt company like all American roughneck, like Seth Ferrosi has or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. I can't build that off Teespring, but it's enough. It's enough for me to get a couple ideas and, and have a hoodie to wear to the gym. I saw you, hey, you, you see, I, I'm rocking mine, right? I, I, I yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you you got to represent the company as, as well. And, and mm-hmm. the venture, uh, Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the two primary shows that you have or, uh, you know, the, the Jacked Up podcast and yeah. the Reversal Roadmap. I mean, they're, they're okay. two distinct, different uh, environments speaking similar messages, yeah. but 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 you got two mm-hmm. distinct audiences. And, and talk to everyone a little bit about what those are and what they mean uh, in terms of the, the message that you put out. Sure, sure. Um, well, for starters, the Jacked Up podcast actually came about because I was making, you know, when you go and you look at my YouTube channel, you'll see I made several late educational videos and things like that. And they were okay. They got a lot of information out there. But James, they bored the shit out of me. They bored me to death. And I thought, I, I here I am thinking so about myself. So wait a minute, the, the, the creation that, part? Or, the creation part both, bored you? Both, or? both, both. <laughs> I was bored when I was making them and then I went back and watched them and I'm looking and I got six views and eight views and, 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 and all that stuff. And to me, it's not about the views. I got like 127 subscribers on my YouTube channel yeah. and every video that I put up there, I look at it like this. I might only have 10 views on it today, but a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, somebody may stumble across that video and they may get a little piece of, of something that changes their life. So I'll keep doing it. Doesn't That's good. I'm glad you. I'm anyway, glad you're okay with the views. I, again, I don't worry about them as well. But I would tell you right now, we're blowing up on LinkedIn right now, brother. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I'm not looking. I, I'm not looking at LinkedIn. I, I, just, I got like hey, five hey, screens hey, over here. So I'm, I'm, hold I'm, on, hold on. I got. I got to do it. I got to do it. Full disclosure to everybody. I got all kinds of toys that I was getting ready to like oh, roll up here in here go. with. And look, look, Ecam just went. Oh, no, there, you there we go. That. I know you I got some of the Ecam family watching too. And yeah, so. <laughs> Mr. V mix over but here couldn't get is. into my studio. Uh, so I got him, I got him naked and just couldn't. Oh, even you use got Chrome. me raw, dude. You yeah. Couldn't even, so you're in Firefox. You couldn't even use Chrome. So it couldn't come in through my, my studio. No thing. vocal effects on my mic. Not, no. Look, I don't have my, I don't have my Barry white voice or anything. All of that's taken away. This is me just raw and real raw. sitting here in my gym shorts and my shirt, getting ready to roll to the gym. Well, let, let me, I can at least do a little something with you. Let me, let me, let me at least, you know, move you around a little bit, make sure oh, folks can zoom in. I, I could do some things with you. I, I know it's not everything that you, you wanted. I got you. No, it's all good. It's there all good. Go. Let me, I no, just, uh, there we go. I always, you know, when I tell people, oh, look, now, now like Lance example, is talking, talking madness. I'll, I'll oh, here we go. Here, he must be oh, one of them. He must oh, be mixed man. It's all good. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think Lance does use, it. but anyway, no, it's, I, you know, I really don't care at the end of the day. And it's just like what I was talking about with those YouTube videos. Yeah. You know, I, I don't care. I, I go live and I don't care if nobody's there doesn't matter to me because that video is going to stay there. And at some point it may help somebody. And that's what I'm all about. So think um, about this as well. And, 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 and I, I don't want to deviate too much. Cause I still got a couple of things I want to talk about, but that okay. resonates with me a lot too. Right. I, the main reason for doing this for me, right. So again, I, I do technical consulting, digital publishing, but the really the, the, the passion behind it is having the conversation with other folks, hearing their story, mm-hmm. turning the lights on, turning the camera on and hearing John mm-hmm. talk about him again. That's the joy in it for me. I, again, I don't care yeah. if anyone's watching. I don't care if there's no comments. I don't care if it's just you and me here sitting here talking. That's what right. drives me. So if you're, so here, here's the segue, here's the soapbox folks. If you're looking at getting into mm-hmm. content creation, if you're looking at doing 
some anything really do it for yourself do it for the passion of it don't do it for the likes and the retweets and the and mm-hmm. and the and the uh, you know the the love from outside society and community do it for yourself yeah. or else for it's you. really not going to resonate with you right it's really not going to have any true meaning if if you have to get that pat on the back from somebody else get the pat on the back from yourself Right. right. Then, then it really matters. And then you, you get the uh, the enjoyment and the satisfaction out of doing right. it. So I'm glad you brought that up. man. Right. Yeah, exactly. And but anyway, so the fact that I was not pleased with the content that I was putting together, even though that I knew I was putting quality content out as far as the educational, you know, stuff that was involved in it and everything like that. Yeah. I, uh, I was talking to somebody one day and they were like, you know, you should maybe you should start a podcast. So after a couple hours of thinking about it, I was like, you know what, maybe I should. So what did I do? I went to that big Facebook group of mine that I'm a resident coach in the dad bod transformation group. And I was like, Hey guys, look, I'm thinking about starting a podcast for me. Cause I'd already done a little bit of podcasting for the, for the dad bod group. I was like, I'm thinking about starting a podcast for me. What do you guys think about that? I need some ideas. And one of the first people that, that like, hopped in my dms he's like yeah man i think you'd be great doing a podcast and talking about nutrition and health and all this other stuff he said and i've got the perfect name he said call it the jacked up podcast but when you spell jacked spell spell it j-a-k-e-d because that's my initials yeah. john anthony kovaleski and i was like dude that is sick i love it so <laughs> then i i first, so the next thing i did james was i sat down and i, and I opened up adobe illustrator and I started playing around with different fonts and I made the logo and I took the, the J A K and I ele- made them bigger and elevated them above the rest. So it was Bring like it something has been yeah. jacked up, you know? So the jacked up podcast was born. I, I was really lucky to score some, some really decent guests right out of the gate. And that hooked me. I was, I was absolutely obsessed with podcasting from there. You know, um, I had people like Mike Gorman, his, they call him Gormy. This guy is amazing. He lost 300 pounds, not once, but twice. He lost it. Didn't he lost it, but he didn't fix. He didn't fix inside. He didn't change the mindset. Okay. So he gained it all back. And then he, he realized that not fixing the mindset was where he went wrong. So he did it again. All right. So that just speaks to, yeah, that just speaks to anybody out there that thinks that you know, mindset isn't crucial when it comes to getting healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're wrong. You're wrong because it is. Love it. So, Love it. yep, that's what started the Jacked Up podcast. Now, the Jacked Up podcast actually led to the reversal roadmap. The okay. reversal roadmap is actually a 12 week program specifically designed for people that have either been told they're pre diabetic or they've been diagnosed with diabetes, particularly type two. Got you. Now, a little clarification between type one and type two. Type one diabetes means your body does not produce insulin. Your, your pancreas just does not produce it or it doesn't produce enough. There is no way to reverse that. Mm. You either have to inject insulin or have a pump. That's just the way it is. Mm. Type two diabetes comes about from those cells, like I was talking about before, becoming resistant to insulin doing its job. This is brought on by excess weight 95% of the time. So if you lose the weight and you control what you're eating and you get rid of some of the medications, because a lot of these medications, (laughs) two in particular that I can think of right off the top of my head, actually cause you to gain weight. One of them specifically causes you to store fat in the midsection, which is the worst place for it. Wow. But yet these are medications that doctors are prescribing every day to people that are diagnosed with type two diabetes. The problem with the way that the medical industry deals with type two diabetes, they manage it. They try to manage Mm -hmm. it. Why manage it when you can reverse it? Why manage it when you can reverse it, James? It makes no sense. Rather than shoving all kinds of medicine down people's throats and getting doctor's visit after doctor's visit after doctor's visit, seeing no results, seeing your patients get depressed, depression causes overeating. And and it just, it goes on and on. Educate them. Mm -hmm. Aubrey Marcus said it best. 
In his book, Own the Day, Own Your Life, Aubrey Marcus said, the best medicine in the world that nobody takes is exercise, and it's free. <laughs> it's absolutely free. It costs you nothing to get your big ass up off the couch and walk around the house if that's what you need to do. And you can do that in lockdown, so there's no excuse. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You know, it's like I get people all the time. Oh, well, man, I need I I, I did this. Um, I, I released this 30 day challenge that I'm going to do. I'm going to coach 30 guys for 30 days for free. Yeah. And it, it's called the. The F that podcast let's, yeah. or the F that challenge. Let's just call it that. OK, I, I won't drop the F bomb. But anyway, um, and so many and what I asked them to do was I asked them to fill out the short form telling me their name, their email address, and why they thought they deserved to be in the challenge. Okay. So many of them were like, well, I picked up all this weight from COVID because I, because the gyms were closed. Bullshit. <laughs> James, when I had to sit around for 16 months, I gained 50 pounds. Wow. Guess what? Through the pandemic, now, through the pandemic, I've lost 38 of those 50 pounds. And that including, that's including having a hernia surgery in between all of that. <laughs> wow. So don't tell me that just because the pandemic came and the gyms are closed, that you're going to sit around and get fat and lazy. Because, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's all up to you. How bad do you want it? What's your why? Why is it you're doing what you're doing? So the verse, let me get back on track. So the reversal roadmap, came about because I started the podcast and I interviewed Dr. Krista Ello. Okay. She is a clinical, she's a clinical pharmacist and a doctor who pretty much turned her back on her colleagues and the way they do things with type two diabetes and started a practice treating diabetes the right way. She and I met each other on the podcast. We stayed friends afterwards. And then I was sitting around here in the studio one day and I was like, you know what? I said, we need to, I, I need to create a 12 week program that is specifically designed for type two diabetics mm -hmm. because I just got done listening to something with Tony Robbins and, and he was like saying, well, you know, he said it, science has proven that psychologically, if you can do anything for six weeks, it's a habit. If you mm -hmm. can do anything for 12 weeks, it's a lifestyle change. A habit can be broken. Lifestyle changes typically aren't. Okay. So I was like, okay, I need to come up with this 12 week program. And I reached out to Krista on Instagram and I was like, Hey, what do you think about putting together a program for diabetics? 12 weeks, you and I go together on it. You've got, you've got the, you've got the science background. I've got the knowledge. I've got the experience. Cause I did it myself. Let's do this. Yeah. She was all about it. So the reversal roadmap was born. And now we've, we've launched that. We have our first few clients in there. They're already, we're less than three weeks in and they're already seeing Drops in their blood sugar, James. Are you ready for this? Drops in their blood sugar up to 50 points. <laughs> Going from fasting blood sugars of wow. 180 wow. to 130 in less than three weeks. We're just getting That's started. Crazy. There is there is so many educational modules and all this kind of content that we have just sitting there waiting for it to come out week by week as they go through this program. We're doing coaching calls with them, not only one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, but we're doing group coaching calls with them every week where everybody gets together and they can motivate and support each other. This is my dream, James. It, the reversal roadmap, hands down, is my dream. Is Definitely T2 involved. Nutrition the vehicle? Yeah. Is, is, is T2 Nutrition and Wellness the vehicle that got me here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But this is my dream. And... I know just as well as anybody else does that you've got certain components that go into this whole thing. Mindset. Okay. You've got recovery. Some people are trying so hard to get healthy that they, they don't take the time to recover. They work out too much. They stress their body too much doing so. They cause inflammation. Inflammation rates raises cortisol. Guess what? You don't lose body fat mm. counterproductive. Okay. So I've got all this stuff going on. Nutrition is the biggest component, but there's also supplementation because people lead busy lives. You know, one, one of my clients in the, in the roadmap program, it's like, 
she was trying so hard to lose weight. And then when I gave her her nutrition numbers of what she was supposed to be eating in her sample days, I had her eating like almost a thousand calories more than what she'd been eating. And she's like, <laughs> how, am I how in the hell? <laughs> yeah. She's like, she, not only how am I supposed to eat this, but she's like, but how, am I, how is this supposed to help me? Yeah. And I was like, you just trust the process. Week one, at the end of week one, she reported into me and said that her, her blood sugars, her seven day average had dropped by 30%. And while she was still struggling, struggling to meet the, the nutrition and getting it all in because she was eating a different quality of food and she was combining the right foods, the right types of fats with the right types of protein and even the right type of carbohydrates by doing all that, her body's changing. Her body is starting to revert back mm -hmm. to what it was originally designed to do because that's our body. Our pancreas is our pancreas is designed to generate insulin. Insulin is designed to help us manage glucose in the blood. If we can get rid of all the excess fat and stop trying to put too much glucose into our system, the body reverts back to its natural state and you become healthier. Folks, that's, that's, Right there, right. That, that's the soundbite for 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 it all, right there. I I, I love that, and I I wanted to be quiet because I wanted you to, to say what you had to say. <laughs> but let, yeah, let me you know me when up. I get on a roll, man. Yeah, hey, look, I I should have just <laughs> gone to you full screen. Let, let me ask this question though. Lance brings up a good question. Is type two diabetes the same as pre diabetes that he keeps hearing about? Pre okay, pre most people now the way doctors are using the term pre diabetic. You have, um, they have certain levels of, or result levels of what the test is that they use to get an average of what your blood sugar has been for three months. Mm. It's called a hemoglobin A1C test. Okay. Now, if your, if your A1C test comes back and you are 5.7 to 6.3, you're classified as pre-diabetic, which means if you don't make some lifestyle changes, you will become type two diabetic because you're only one point away mm. from tipping over to that scale. And you wouldn't think that one point would make a whole lot of difference, but we're talking about your body's ability to be able to process glucose. So it becomes a huge difference. Gotcha. Okay. When you're pre-diabetic, you are, your body is struggling. It's still getting, you know, somewhat of, decent processing when it comes to the glucose, but you're struggling. 98% of people that are told they're pre-diabetic are overweight or obese. Okay. Okay. And I mean, we could have a whole nother show just on obesity and because it doesn't only affect type two diabetes, it's the number one cause of heart disease. It's the number one cause of things like gout, arthritis, wow. Because it, what, you, when you're obese, you're carrying around all that excess weight. It's weighing on your joints. I'm writing down show so, ideas as you're talking. Uh, hey, that's fine. That's fine. You know me. Be like, John, yeah, let's talk it. about this. Okay, I'm there for sure. But yeah, so it's like that's what we're teaching people to do in the roadmap. It, we're teaching people to reprogram their brains. Stop this whole you need to eat six meals a day and you need to eat mm. fruit. You need to make sure that you're eating complex carbohydrates rather than than simple carbohydrates, which is, is true, but the way that they tell you to do it is wrong. It, it, it's all about people have the wrong information. They're, they're being given, they're, it's like they're being told to build a house and they're, be, they, they're being given water noodles and, and, and pool toys to build a house. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just, it, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it because I'm an old West Virginia boy. It's like trying to piss up a rope. The only thing you're going to do is get your hands wet. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Say that. Whoa, hold on, folks. Let's, let's get focused here. Um, say, say, give me, give me that one more time there. You say, want that one more time? I said, okay. <laughs> trying to get healthy without the right information is like trying to piss up a rope. If you're standing there holding that rope still and you try to piss up that rope, the only thing you're going to do is get your hands wet. I, we, we might as well just stop right there. I, I don't know what else to say, but <laughs> folks, if you're not, if you're not listening to this man dropping this on you, <laughs> he said, trying to piss up a rope. God, 
Okay, that's a good one right there, brother. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. Yep. Listen, John, I want to be cognizant of your time. I know you got a busy schedule. I do want to hit one last thing, and it's a mm-hmm. slightly different topic. It's it's about it's about the beard game. Okay. And it's and it's for Dre because 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 he's he's mutual family to us, and I, and I did say at yes. the beginning that I would bring that in. But but before we go into that, the stuff that we've been talking about right now. Um, it's critical. It's important. This is good information, folks. I will make sure that you at least have links to you have the links to all of John's content, right? You you have mm-hmm. his his, uh, his email address, his, his website, his uh, ketogenic nutrition T two, uh, the Jacked Up podcast, all that stuff, so that you can stay in contact. The shows and the content that he puts out, John, you, you do some really good things. So uh, I really want Thank folks you, to 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 jump on board and, and hear your message because you, you, you definitely have the story and you pers- you have the personal side of it as well, right? So it, it matters to you. Everything you're talking about yeah. resonates. It's not just the business of, of mm-hmm. nutrition, kind of, kind of like we were kind of almost going to about how doctors are forcing folks or mm-hmm. telling folks to keep taking this medicine, keep taking. It's because of the business side. But when you really look at the individual and you're trying to help the individ- individual be better, you might you can probably take away some of those those pills and some of those other things and talk lifestyle, talk uh, yep. um, wellness and self care. Talk talk about some different aspects as opposed to again right. taking this this new statin or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, here's this here's this new diabetic medicine. Oh, it's yeah. it's gonna yeah. it's gonna put ten pounds of fat in your midsection. Don't pay. Uh, but don't pay any attention. Yeah. Don't pay attention to that. Come on now. <laughs> All right, brother. Let, let, let's get into it. Talk, talk to me about the beard oil. Talk to me about the how you what you got. I, I know it's right behind Dude. you. And and let me yeah, let me it pull. is actually. Let me let me let me turn around and grab a couple things here. Okay. All right. Well, let's Go start off. Pitch. Um. Well, uh, let, let, real quick, let me. Th- this won't be a pitch. I'll tell you how I got involved with Mountaineer Brand. Um, when I decided I want to grow my beard out, the first thing I did, like everybody else, when they're looking for new products and things of that nature, what's the first place you go to Amazon? Mm-hmm. And I found a place on Amazon is they were selling products and it was Mountaineer brand. Well, Mountaineer, I'm from West Virginia. So that kind of hits home a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So I bought some of their products. I liked them. I liked them because they're all natural. I'm a firm believer in what you put on your body goes into your body. So having all natural products is like super key and everything that they make is make made right here in this location and it's all made by hand and everything is 100% natural. Like this is, see if my camera will focus in on that. That's their essential seven beard wash. They have many different scents. This is just some of their premium stuff. Like this is, um, this is the original blend beard wash. They have recently come out with, a line of beard growth products that um, everything from a beard growth roller, which actually stimulates the follicles starting in the skin and working their way out. There's a beard growth serum, a balm. Um, there's a primer that you use as like the next step of the process. It's, it's all laid out on their, on their website and their YouTube channel and whatnot. We've made all this content. Um, but the best thing about, Everything that they make is it's all natural. You know, you don't have to worry about putting chemicals on your body. And it's not just beard stuff, by the way. They have um, bald head care products, okay? Because y'all know underneath the beanie, I'm bald. But why, why, you, why are you getting in? Get, okay, hold on. Here we go. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying there ain't, ain't nothing wrong with being bald. I love the uh-huh. fact that I – look, my, hair, my hairline used to stop like right about here. That's where my forehead started. So – I just shaved it off to be done with it, but they have, um, these are just two. They got like a four step program. Um, and these are just two of it. This is protect. This is like a balm that you put on your head after you shave. This is, is in my opinion, the best product that they have in the beard, in the bald head care line. And what this does, it resets the pH balance of your scalp. Most people don't understand that when you don't have hair, your body actually generates more of the grease that goes in that is like expelled out of your scalp to protect it. It's called sebum. Okay. What the balance does is it clears all that sebum off, opens up your pores and then rebalances the pH of your skin. So it's, it's super, super powerful stuff. There's science behind being bold. 
Oh yeah. And, and the thing that I like best, it, there was two reasons that I got connected with Mountaineer brand. First of all, um, when I decided to go into business, I wanted to meet the owner of this place when I found out he was local to me because I wanted to know how this man I'd read enough about him to know that he started this business in his kitchen because he was growing a beard and he didn't like all the products that were out there yeah. and he didn't like all the chemicals. He started in his kitchen, went from his kitchen to his garage. And now he's got a multiple thousand square foot facility. He's got this building that he actually like, Hey, you're making content for me. And it's, it's, it's a pain for you to have to, cause my studio was at home to be going, I'd have to come in here and do video shoots and sometimes take stuff back out there for editing and all. So we just moved my studio here, but more than anything, I mean, I mean, I reached out to him because I wanted to pick his brain. I wanted to know how he did what he did. Yeah. But then I fell in love with the products and and the way they do things and the concepts behind it. And I just never looked back. It's like they even just they've they've started to come out with limited edition products um, and they're getting into things like body wash. Um, okay. They just released a new limited edition scent called Whitewater and they have a beard oil, a beard balm and a body spray. Get it, man. Get it, bro. Yeah. Self-care they're, they're, for they're, it. Man, they're, they're, they're actually, they're making products. They're in the process of making products and relaunching a website for women. Everything from um, what well, they have experimented with, like um, diaper rash cream, all different kinds of stuff. So it, they're all about natural self-care. Good, good. Love sure. that. Well, I, I, I wish you success, continued success with that. Uh, that, that, that's, that's amazing. And I, I may get some of that, that bald cream or something there. I, I got a, a guy who, uh, one, one of my buddies who re just recently went bald too and says he's having some problems. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to him and mm -hmm. turn him over to the mountaineer Absolutely. side. Mm -hmm. For sure. John, give me, give me three, um, best practices, three, go-to tips, uh, not, not quick remedies, but, you know, give me three uh, statements that you would say for folks looking to uh, improve themselves physically, uh, mentally, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, from a, from a nutrition perspective. What, what, what can you tell folks just that are listening right now to, to get onto that journey of making, uh, of being better to themselves? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, from a nutrition standpoint, uh, I will say this because carbohydrates have been so villainized in the last 10 years with the advancement of the ketogenic diet, carnivore diet, and things like that. Um, carbohydrates are not evil. Okay. They are dangerous. If you're eating too many of them, they are dangerous. If you are predisposed to conditions like type two diabetes. So folks understand, learn, learn what they are, understand them. And, and moderate them. Okay. That's what I'll say about nutrition about, um, working on yourself. Dude, never stop learning. You are never too old to learn something new. I learn something new every day. I haven't listened to a radio station in my car in three years. I'm listening to podcasts, mm -hmm. audio books, whatever. I'm even listening to the stuff in the background of my headphones while I'm editing a podcast episode or something. I've got that playing in the background, you know? Um, so that's what I would say about, you know, working on yourself as far as overall health goes and, and improving the quality of your life through health and fitness. The, the only, the only way I can say it is this invest in yourself. Stop spending $5 a day at Starbucks mm -hmm. on shitty coffee. That isn't going to do anything, but put fat on your ass. Mm -hmm. Take that money, put it aside, and if you're struggling with your weight, if you're struggling with trying to lose body fat, if you're struggling with having the energy to spend time with your husband or your wife, to spend time with your family, your friends, whatever it is, whatever your why is for trying to improve you and who you are as a whole, invest in yourself. James, I have a coach. I don't have a fitness coach. I don't need a fitness coach. I have a business coach. Mm -hmm. I have a business coach because I need to improve the quality of what I'm doing here so I can reach more people. But any investment that you make in yourself is always a guaranteed win. All you have to do after you make that investment is do the work. Do the work. You can hire me as a coach today 
And within seven days of us meeting on a Zoom call, you're going to have a nutrition program that's specifically designed for you, not some cookie cutter thing that I give to everybody. You're going to have workouts that are tailored for you. If you have problems with your knees, you're not going to be doing squats on leg day. You're going to be doing leg press. You're going to be doing other things that will still exercise the muscles without causing the, the joints to pain. Right. Okay. And the most important thing you're going to have is you're going to have somebody that gives a shit. Somebody that cares about your yeah. success. Love it. I want every person that I work with. I, I, I want pictures of them with their grandbabies and great grandbabies in their 80s. I would love to have that 10, 15, 20 years from now all over my walls. Just pictures of people sending me saying, you know, that YouTube video you did changed my life. You know, that, 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 that live that I saw you do on Facebook, that live that I saw you do on, Inst on, on LinkedIn with James changed my life. Brother, that's what it's all about for me. That's a, that's, the, that's what I wanted right there, right? Uh, and, and I apologize for, for harping on it throughout this conversation, but, you know, the, the, the genuineness of your message, the, your why. Let, let's, let's be selfish and forget everyone else's why, but your why of wanting to help mm -hmm. folks. That's what I want folks to, to understand when they hear the message from you, the fact that it resonates so deeply in your heart and in your spirit. Those, those are the things that matter. So uh, I appreciate you for that. I appreciate you for the time. Appreciate you for the message and for putting in this good work. Uh, John, this has been pretty cool, man. It's been fun. Uh, Brother, it, it's always fun to talk to you. It, it doesn't matter. We, we Look, we've had impromptu jump-ins on other shows. We've yeah. had all kinds of stuff going on. We do what we and, do. Yeah, that's it. And you, and you know me. I got lots of irons in the fire. I got lots of things I can talk about. And I'm all about bringing value to people. So you ever need me to talk about anything, you just say the word, brother. I got I you. I will, man. I will. I appreciate you again, man. Go out, enjoy the rest of your day. Go go get you a, a run in. Go get you a, a quick workout in or something before your next show or something. But, folks, mm -hmm. John Kowaleski is certified. He's a nutrition specialist. He will help you find the right answers, right? If, if, if Again, if you're looking for the right way of taking care of yourself, again, from a physical, from a mental perspective, uh, reach out to this man. Again, I will put links to a lot of John's uh, content out in the, in the show notes on both YouTube and on LinkedIn so you can stay in touch with him. But outside of that, brother, I appreciate you. Have a great day. And uh, again, you you're, you're, you're a good man. Right back at you, brother. Later, man.